Our next speaker is Jürgen from Bosch. Let's welcome you. Hello everybody, my name is Jürgen, I work at Robert Bosch, game uh, there, and I will talk about a slightly different application of recommender systems, it's a recommender system in vehicles. I will first describe our vision of how recommender systems will be used in vehicles, and then I will uh, describe the application which we have recently developed for convenience charging, and some conclusions will follow. So Bosch is the largest uh, automotive supplier in the world, and here are some directions where we see the future of mobility. The first direction is uh, mobility will be personalized. That means your vehicle will know your identity when you enter the car, it will adjust the seat, the mirrors, the heating, it might know where you are going to drive to, it might know if it's a personal, private trip or a business related trip. And it will also allow you to switch between modalities from your car, from shared services or using public transport. The second direction is automated driving. Um, automated driving will come slowly in steps. The third direction is connected. Uh, your car will be connected to the internet, it will be connected to our vehicles, it can exchange information about uh, the vehicles, and it will be connected to your home, to a city, parking spaces. And finally, the fourth direction is electrified mobility. So what are typical examples of in-vehicle recommender systems? Location-based services offers a lot of opportunities, uh, for example, PUI, PUI recommendations, uh, fueling station search, charging station search, parking spaces, social network related services. And we have the typical infotainment applications like music, communication, information, navigation. Um, <clears throat> we also have vehicle control related recommendations like interior settings, but also related to driver assistance applications. Then we have vehicle maintenance and smart home. For example, if you're driving home, your heating will automatically start heating. And if you're leaving home, uh, the system checks if you have locked the doors or if your oven has been turned off, things like this. So what is the big difference or opportunity in vehicle systems? Um, in the vehicle, we have a lot of sensors, we have a lot of information about the context. We know about the driver, uh, we know about his preferences, his needs, <clears throat> um, about his calendar, where he might be driving to. We also can find out the sensor about his condition, is he falling asleep? Should I recommend a coffee for him? Or is he to... Uh, is it just engaged in a difficult driving situa situation and I probably shouldn't distract him by some recommendation? And if we know about the passengers in the car, if there are kids, so if there are kids in the car, I might recommend uh, a restaurant with a playground. We also have uh, external vehicle sensors, so we know about the whole surrounding of the car. We know about the vehicle's front fit uh, to the side. So you can use all this information and make it context-dependent recommendations. We are also connected to the outside world with the car. Uh, we are connected to smart cities, to, uh, to the home, and between vehicles, what I described before. And we are also connected to social networks. So we can find out if somebody of your friends is close by, or if some of your friends has recently visited the location uh, that matches your interests, so we can make uh, such dependent rec recommendations to the, to the driver. One big challenge is human-machine interface, because in the car 
Uh, the driver is basically, his first task, his main task is the driving task. So you should, you should not able, you should not distract him from his driving. So speech and audio output is the main, probably one of the main uh, modalities of input and output, but the user might also use other modalities. Recommendation should be non-destructive, so you should not uh, distract the driver while he is driving. Uh, it has to interplay with other functionalities because um, <clears throat> there might be some music playing, um, the driver might do some, di some different uh, things. Um, it should be explainable to the driver why something has re been recommended. And among the huge uh, choice of application, it should be prioritized. So you should really find out uh, what is now a good recommendation to make for the driver. And slowly, such a system should go from recommendations to decisions. If the driver has been uh, doing the same things again, then the system might already uh, make some decisions about uh, instead of recommendations. Privacy and security will be a big topic because you basically have your own your whole data in the car, and this car might be shared with other people, with family, with co-workers. It might be shared mobility, where uh, you synchronize your data with a uh, 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 other car, and that's used by other people. And you might also use smart contracts for. Uh, where your vehicle is basically making contracts with some POI, with some gasoline station, where you don't have to uh, enter on any additional uh, payment information. Or where you don't have to uh, confirm payment information. Now, in automated driving, um, the recommender has very different uh, requirements. Where in non-automated driving, the car is fully, the driver is fully concentrated on driving. Uh, if you have a fully automated car, uh, the user can spend any time in uh, working and getting recommendation and iterating and so on. Uh, but in the different automated driving levels, uh, the, the driver is still basically involved in the driving task. And for example, in level three, that's an automated driving level where uh, your car is automatically driving, but uh, in certain cases, it might request you to overtake driving. For example, if there's a road construction ahead, which the system cannot deal with, uh, it might tell you you have to overtake in one minute. So depending on the automated driving level, uh, the recommender system has to be adapted to this. So our vision of the recommender systems in NATO is the ultimate in NATO recommender system understands me, my preferences and needs, it knows about my context and environment, it optimally assists me to give me a personalized and unique experience that I can trust before, during and after the trip. So you also want to use your system from home on a smartphone, synchronize it when you get into vehicle and until you reach the final destination. So now I'll describe an example application we've been implementing, we've implemented last year. And uh, this is, we, we call it convenience charging. It's a routing algorithm that uh, finds the charging stations between your, between your origin and destination, uh, especially for electric vehicles. So it finds routes, it uh, knows how far you can reach, uh, how far you can get with your current battery load, and finds uh, charging stations on the way, and combines this with the automatic uh, point of interest recommendation. Uh, so it can be synchronized with a smartphone in the vehicle. It does an accurate range prediction using knowing information about how many passengers are in the car, what is the driving style, uh, what is the road topology, and um, 
information about the car. So here there are some details. So it has an access management for the user and charging stations. Does an accurate range prediction. Then it uh, calculates different route alternatives and makes sure that uh, the vehicle never runs out of electricity. Uh, then it combines uh, the charging stations with point of interest of the user's preference and uh, it proposes different alternatives to the user. So this is a rough uh, overview of the architecture. We also believe that ontologies, knowledge graphs, are an important method in the combination of uh, knowledge graphs and machine graphs and learning. Um, this is, is a way forward because we are using a lot of uh, structural information about the user, about the driving situation. Uh, we use knowledge graphs to represent this. And here is a some details about the meta routing. So we are using a, a basic uh, directed graph for the route uh, calculation, and we enlarge this, we augment this with uh, location-based services, with uh, vehicle and passenger context, with uh, passenger preferences. And from this, we uh, calculate different alternatives of routes, with charging stations and POIs. We do a multi-criteria preference ranking, and this is uh, presented to the driver. So now I'll to stop. <laughs> uh, some conclusions. Um, well, basically, this is just the beginning of a huge field of recommended systems in cars. It's uh, highly complex because of the context, uh, driving situation, and yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot. Hello? Yes, sir. thank you for a great talk. I have a question. Are you sure people need that? <laughs> it's actually sound too much in terms of recommendations and have you evaluated it somehow on the people? Like, uh, are they interested in this type of overall recommendations in the cars? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Well, <laughs> Um, the charging station, the convenience charging, they definitely want this because electric cars, uh, one of the main reasons why electric cars are, uh, people don't want to buy them is because of range anxiety. Uh, electric cars, they cannot drive them so much as conven uh, conventional cars. Uh, the charging network is not very well developed. So one of the main reasons is the range anxiety getting stuck without electricity and having an algorithm or function that uh, where you can plan your route and find charging stations and when you charge your car you can do any other things you are interested in and that's what, what people would like to have. That's sexy again for the talk.